Decompilation, recompilation, ports. You've heard these terms being thrown around when it comes to all things Nintendo 64 and the various enhanced ports that we're seeing running on Windows platforms in recent times. But in this episode, I want to kind of set the record straight and tell you guys the differences between what a decompilation is, a recompilation, and a port. And we're going to kind of throw in some really interesting and useful examples to really kind of nail this down because there has been a lot of misinformation and confusion around what these terms actually mean. So a decompilation is the first thing that I want to talk about. And this is kind of the traditional way that Nintendo 64 games have been reverse engineered. And essentially what a decompilation is, is the process of just converting a compiled program back to its original programming language. Now, in the case of Nintendo 64 games, most often than not, that's going to be in C. Now, in order to make a decompilation, you provide it with a compiled piece of binary or bytecode, and the output of that decompilation is just source code, right? Now, the complexity of all this is generating that source code. How do you go about doing that? Well, there are various tools out there that can do this for you, including kind of high-level reverse engineering tools like Ghidra or IDA Pro, which can very much help with this process. But in the case of Nintendo 64, generally speaking, there are various tools that the community have developed that enable the generation of source code from MIPS binary data. And this is something that a lot of the community uses with their decompilation efforts. And I think this is where part of the confusion lies, and it's indeed something that I've incorrectly said myself. But the process of a decomp is generating that source code to be as human readable as possible and to match the original ROM so that the code could be compiled to build that exact ROM 100%. This process is not fast and can take years. Now, if we take a look at this GitHub repository, it is the N64 decomp page, and this is kind of the landing page of many of the decomps that have gone on over the last couple of years or even beyond that because some of these decompilations take a very, very long time. You can see that all the source code for Banjo-Kazooie, the decompiled source code, is available on the GitHub page. But if we go down, you can see that it says Banjo-Kazooie 100%. So what that means is if we take a Banjo-Kazooie ROM image, effectively what we're saying is this decompilation is complete because we have matched the source code that we've rebuilt and it matches the exact ROM image that was provided previously. So this decompilation is completed. Now, if we take a look at the source code, however, you'll see that even though the source code has been decompiled, these function names are very, very generic. So it's still not an exact match of the source code itself, but it doesn't really matter when it comes to a compiler because when a compiler sees these functions, it doesn't really matter what these are labeled. If the logic inside these functions matches exactly with what the original game had, then you've done your job. It's a 100% match across the board. And I think this is where a lot of the confusion stems from because there is a association with the phrase decompilation to mean a port that's running on your favorite platform. And these are two separate pieces altogether. I won't let you get away from me. A port is then taking that source code and targeting a hardware platform and applying a backend renderer to it, an audio subsystem, inputs, and the various other systems for that game to be playable. So in the case of Perfect Dark, if you take a look at the repository, it says that this repository contains a work in progress port of the Perfect Dark decompilation. So the port itself is effectively just adding features that a modern PC would take advantage of in things like mouse look, dual analog controller support, widescreen resolution, up to 4K rendering, configurable field of view, 60 frames per second, mod support, just various enhancements to kind of give you a modern gameplay experience with an old N64 game that never ran you know, any more than 20 frames per second. And we shouldn't just imply that a decompilation means Nintendo 64 because there are various other decompilation efforts 
And the most popular one is the Jack project known as Open Goal, which is the port of Jack and Daxter and Jack and Daxter 2 to PC, which required a decompilation of the original game into human readable code. Now the code for Jack and Daxter was known as Goal, and the Open Goal project facilitates running or executing this code on PC. So the Goal compiler was built to recompile the game to run on x86 and x64. But there's also the porting process that was done to make the game run on a Windows PC with modern enhancements and modern quality of life features. Now a recompilation effectively integrates the reverse engineering steps of a decomp and the porting process into a single workflow. In other words, it combines all those steps of a decomp and a port into one process. The recompilation process statically recompiles N64 binaries into C code. However, this C code is auto-generated and differs from a decomp in that the code can be very quickly generated and can knock years off a decomp project. The recompiled C code can then be compiled on Windows and linked with a runtime known as N64 runtime that handles platform-specific I.O., threading, audio, timers, message queues, and more. It even provides hooks to use a graphics renderer, which is the very excellent RT64 renderer developed by Dario Samo. In recent times, modding support has been added to the recomp workflow, which enables customizations to the games without modifying any of the original recomp code that was auto-generated. Now we did cover the recomp tool almost a year ago and if this process is as streamlined as we said it was to be then why haven't we seen more recomps in recent times? The static recompilation approach is generic and can run against any N64 ROM binary in theory. But there is still work that needs to be done on a per game basis before any recomp could be considered releasable. For example, a straight recomp of an N64 game that runs on Windows without any frame rate or graphical improvements wouldn't really benefit over using traditional emulation. Each game needs to be individually adjusted to run on modern hardware. Or maybe we can think of it another way. Originally, all these N64 games didn't know anything about high frame rates, high resolutions, and aspect ratios. Although the N64 runtime and RT64 renderer provide this functionality, the games will still need to be modified to support high resolutions, high frame rates, widescreen aspect ratios, and various other fixes. Each game can render its polygons differently, so work still needs to be done to handle this. Yes, a recomp can knock years off a decomp and a port, but enhancing that port still requires time, and that time depends on the complexity of the code. The good news, however, is that this recomp process is already proven to work. There are already publicly released recomps of Goemon and Dinosaur Planet that have been released, with other recomps that are in development, and the list is growing. Now the thing that's really important to understand here, although decomps and recomps use different workflows, a recomp is a process that's aimed at making ports of games that have partial decomps available as well. For example, last year, I was able to quickly run a recomp tool against Mario Kart 64 decomp, even though that had still not yet 100% matching decomp. And just like decomps, recomps also aren't exclusive to the Nintendo 64. We've already seen this approach used for Sonic Unleashed Recompiled, which uses a similar workflow for an Xbox 360 title. So in theory, a recompilation could be applied to other hardware platforms as well. So hopefully that does clear up the air about what we mean by a decomp versus a recomp versus a port. These three terms obviously get thrown around a lot and at the end of the day, hopefully this makes things a lot more clearer. Before I go, I do want to give a huge thank you to the various recompilation, decompilation and port teams that are working very, very hard to bring these amazing N64 titles and indeed various other titles from other systems to your favorite PC or your Steam Deck or your game console that's hacked, these are the unsung heroes of all things preservation. Being able to access source code to these games that ran on the Nintendo 64 that we will probably never see again outside of the NSO service is extremely awesome to see. But hey, we're going to leave it here for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked it, please don't forget to leave me a thumbs up and we'll catch you in the next episode. Bye for now.